Still on that subject of uh, me route metric manipulation, we just saw how to do that in EIGRP with the bandwidth command. Now with RIP, you know, we don't manipulate any RIP metrics in this course because we don't really work with it anymore in the CCNA, but as you would expect, no metric that ranges from 1 to 16, with 16 being unreachable, is going to be really hard to work with. You know, there's not a, not a lot of tweaking there you could do. Uh, OSPF costs, we've seen once you get used to the formula, they're easy to predict, and by the time you've worked in some labs or anything like that or watched these videos, you know a couple of basic costs, what an Ethernet port costs, what a serial port costs. So, you know, they're, they're relatively easy to work with. Now, EIGRP, we saw that from the very beginning. I mean, we're, we've, we've seen seven and eight number metrics, and that's just a, in a lab environment. You know, it's not even in a huge environment like an enterprise network. There are five values that either can do or don't figure into the EIGRP metric, and I guess you could say that about 2,000 values. You know, there are 2,000 values that can do or don't figure into it, but we're seeing it about five. There has been some differing information about these over the years, to say the least. So clear all confusion right now. This is the official word from Cisco on all five. Bandwidth and delay are used by default in EIGRP route calculation. There's never been any real argument about that. Load and reliability, not used by default, but can be used in the calculation. MTU, this is the one that there's been a lot of discussion about over the years. The official word is it is advertised, but it is not used in the EIGRP route calculation. Now, we just saw how to use the bandwidth command to change the route metrics. And it is possible to change them using the delay command, and that's going to be on the interface as well. Uh, you're talking to a guy here who likes numbers, who likes formulas, who was dropped on his head as a small child, possibly as an adult. But I, I love that stuff. You know, I love binary. I love subnetting. That's how I got into this stuff, is teaching other people, you know, a direct way to do it. When it gets into formulas, stuff like that, I love that stuff. Even I don't like to use the delay metric for, e, for EIGRP to try to tweak a route metric. And here's why. And I've got it on the board here, actually, so I'll just leave it here. Literally, with delay, you are dealing with tens of microseconds. Even better, when you go to show IP protocols to verify it or another show IP command, EIGRP command, then it's talking about just microseconds. Now, I know you can do the math with tens and, you know, tens and such, but... You know, you're dealing with tens of microseconds. Do you really want to just keep changing the delay value until you get what you want? Uh, I am not saying this can't be done. I'm not saying that if someone at your network is doing it, uh, you know, they're wrong. I am saying, though, that you really should strongly consider using the bandwidth command to tweak your EIGRP route metrics because the delay command, even with the formula that you have to go out to Cisco's website and get off, get off of there and start figuring it out, wow. I mean, to me, it's just a lot easier to use the bandwidth command as long as you're not tweaking anything else with the bandwidth command. So that is it for the route metrics. On the very next video, you know, we haven't really talked about the EIGRP RID yet. We're going to talk about that on the very next video, talk about the rules. They'll all sound very familiar to you, and you will see exactly how to change it because it's a little different than you might think, and we're going to get a little side effect that you might not have seen with the OSPF RID. And also, of course, we'll talk about how to hard code it. So I'll see you there on the next video.